Hello, we are um, going to read chapter two from Pigs in the Parlor. The book is called Pigs in the Parlor. Um, chapter two. Our spiritual enemies. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Demons are spiritual enemies, and it is the responsibility of each Christian to deal with them directly in spiritual warfare. Excuse me. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. The scripture employs the analogy of wrestling in reference to our warfare with Satan and his hosts. Wrestling is an accurate and pointed deception description. It speaks of close quarter fighting of personal grappling with the powers of darkness. Most of us would prefer to use a giant cannon and blast away the enemies from miles away, but this is not possible. The battle is very personal and close. The enemy is a spiritual one. The weapons are spiritual. Wrestling also suggests pressure and tactics. This tells us that Satan's tactics this tells us that Satan's tactics is to put <clears throat> pressure on us. He does this in the area of our th thought life, emotions, decision making, and our physical bodies. Believers often feel pressured by the enemy in one way or another. When one is ignorant of Satan's devices, he may turn for relief to various sources. But God's remedy for victory over demonic pressures is for spiritual warfare. The Bible shows us how the Christian can put pressure upon the demons and defeat them. He must then learn the practical ways in which this is done. He must throw away his ineffective fleshly weapons and take up mighty spiritual weapons. The believer must know both his own weaponry and how to employ it and the tactics of the enemy and how to defeat him. Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 12 tells us four, four important things about our spiritual enemy. First, we are told that we are fighting against principalities. The Greek word for principalities is archaeus, archaeus, A-R-C-H-A-S. This word is used to describe things in a series, such as leaders, rulers, and magistrates. Thus, a series of leaders or rulers would describe their rank and organization. So the word principalities tells us that the satanic kingdom is highly organized. Perhaps Satan's forces are much the same in organization as the army of the United States, which has the president as commander in chief, followed by generals, colonels, majors, captains, lieutenants, and down to the private. Satan is the head of his kingdom and has under him a rank of ruling spirits ultimately subject unto himself. The English word principality is defined as the territory or jurisdiction of a prince or the country that gives title to a prince. Webster, that's a Webster. Thus, we see that these ruling spirits are assigned over areas such as nations and cities. This is borne out by the account in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel was seeking a word from God through prayer and fasting. After three weeks, an angel appeared. The angel explained that he had been delayed in getting to Daniel with God's message by an encounter with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Excuse me.
he does not refer to an earthly prince. He does not refer to an earthly prince. For no mere man could withstand a heavenly messenger. He is speaking of a demon prince. For this, from, from this, it is clear that there are ruling demon spirits placed by Satan over nations and cities in order to carry out his evil purposes. Problems that persist and plague churches are, and homes can well indicate that special evil agents have been assigned to cause trouble in these areas as well. Thus, we discover that our spiritual warfare embraces much more than our individual lives. We are fighting for the war welfare of our homes, communities, and nation. The enemy is thoroughly organized. He moves and he, his moves are made with evil designs. Second, we are told that our warfare is against powers. The Greek word translated powers is exousia, exousias. E-X-O-U-S-I-A-S. -S. The word is accurately translated as authorities. This word tells us that the demons who are placed over various areas or territories are given authority to carry out whatever orders have been assigned. The, the Christian soldier needs not be dismayed or discouraged to learn that those whom he faces have been given authority. For the believer has even greater authority. He is vested with the authority of the name of Jesus. And in Mark chapter 16, 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. These, this is the, these are the signs that will follow those that believe immediately after they believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. This verse tells us that the believer has greater authority than the authority of demons. Demons are forced to yield to the authority of the name of Jesus. The scripture reveals that demons not only have authority, but they have power. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, we read of the power of the enemy. The word for power in the Greek is dunamis. Our English words dynamo and dynamite come from this word. Yet this fact will not daunt the Christian warrior, for he has the promise of God's word that he can have greater power than that of the enemy. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The power of the believer comes to him with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows that his followers need both authority and power to deal with the enemy when he sent the 12 out in ministry he sent them fully equipped luke 9 chapter 1 luke chapter 9 verse 1 says then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power which is dunamis and authority exousia over all devils and to cure diseases A little later in his ministry, Jesus sent 70, the 70 disciples out two by two. And when they returned, they reported that they successfully dealt with the demon powers in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 19 says, um, and, the seven, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power, which is exousia, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power dunamis of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. The commission that Jesus has given to his church provides the same authority and power in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17, we are told that the believers are to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. The promise was not limited to the apostles or first century disciples. 
but for all believers of all times. <clears throat> the commission, as stated in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, opens with the declaration, All power, authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore. We today have the same authority and power for ministry that was given to the church initially. It would be sheer folly to go against demon spirits without this power and authority. The authority comes through salvation. The power comes through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The power given the believer through the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit is evidenced through the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. See 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. The gifts of the Spirit, such as supernatural words of knowledge and dis discerning of spirits, are indispensable in spiritual warfare. This power and the authority of Jesus' name are given that the believer might overcome demon powers. A policeman is an example of authority and power. A policeman. He gets up in the morning and before he goes to duty, he puts on his uniform and his badge. Everyone recognizes his authority when they see him, his uniform and badge. But there are some lawless persons who will not respect this authority. So the policeman straps his billy club on one hip and his revolver on the other. Now he has the power to back up his authority. In like manner, the Christian is foolish to go out against demon forces without both his authority and his power. We are not to wait for God to come to our rescue. It is not a time to pray that God will provide power and authority. He has already provided for our salvation and our baptism in the Holy Spirit. He is therefore waiting for us to recognize that he has already made the necessary provisions and that we are to engage in spiritual warfare and become the militant church prophesied. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 says, And I say unto thee, Thou, thou, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Third, we learn that we wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The word in Greek for world, world rulers is cosmokratoras. The word can be translated Lord of lords of the world or princes of this age. This designation of the enemy emphasizes his intention to control. Satan is referred to in scripture as the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And Adam fell through sin. Satan gained dominion over the world. Jesus did not deny the devil's claim made during the wilderness temptations. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 9 reads, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. It is imperative that we recognize Satan to be a defeated foe. Let me repeat that. It is imperative that we recognize Satan as a defeated foe. He is stripped of his power and his kingdom. We have every right to treat him as a trespasser. Again, we have every right to treat Satan as a trespasser. Suppose you own a piece of wooded property. You put up signs around that property saying no trespassing. This signifies that you own the property and have a legal right to keep others off of it. A hunter comes by. He disregards your notices posted around the property and trespasses. When you find him there, you can make him leave. He has no right to stay. It is important that we understand that demon spirits have no legal right to the Christian. Again, let me repeat. Demons have no legal right 
to the Christian unless there's an open door. And we're going to discuss that in this book. They may trespass, but when we are ready to take the initiative and give them notice, they must leave. Just Jesus explained his ability to cast out demons in these words. In Luke chapter 11, verse 20 through 22, it says, But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overtake, overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. Jesus declared that the strong man's armor was taken away from him. This means that Satan is made completely defenseless. The expression, all his armor, is the Greek word panoplia. This word panoplia is used one other time in the New Testament. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, the Christian is exhorted to take unto himself the whole armor of God. Thus, the Christian is not vulnerable at any point, while the devil is vulnerable at every point. Satan is still seeking to rule the world. And we must agree that he has made considerable progress. Why? Because the church has not risen up in the power and authority given it. However, a large segment of the body of Christ today is coming into a knowledge of the enemy and of its own spiritual weaponry and strength and is taking the offensive against Satan and his hosts. The more Christians who enter into the warfare, the more Satan will suffer loss. We must wake up and know that we have a battle to fight and we're gonna and we're and we're not gonna walk into the battle we're not gonna crawl in we're gonna run into the battle with with all our weapons on all our spiritual warmer air armor on and holiness and righteousness and we're gonna defeat the devil every day of our life fourth the scriptures say that we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places the key to this phrase is the word wickedness the word suggests that which is highly injurious or destructive in character. The evil powers have only one objective, wickedness. Again, let me repeat. The evil powers have only one objective, wickedness. They may appear as angels of light and by their deceptiveness draw many into their nets of destruction. Jesus exposed their wicked purposes in these words, John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. These four expressions from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, have given us a very vivid picture of Satan's kingdom. It is highly organized to carry out its purposes. Demon powers are set in array and given authority by Satan to control the entire world and plague it with pernicious evil. There is no advantage to us in ignoring Satan's forces and methods. This only permits Satan to work undetected and unchallenged, to fail to become actively involved in spiritual warfare, is to suggest that we do not care what becomes of ourselves, our loved ones, our community, our nation, and our world. Most Christians have not become engaged in spiritual battle because they have never been taught the importance of it, nor the way to go about it. Today, Satan is flaunting his power through spirit, spiritism, occultism, false religions, and cults as never before in all human history. The church is being forced to re-examine its own resources. God is raising up a mighty army today that is going forth with spiritual weapons. The results are impressive. Through the ministry of deliverance, thousands of God's people are being set free from the torments of, de of demonic spirits.
in Jesus' name. And that is the chapter two. Uh, the next chapter is uh, three, chapter three, fight the good fight. And that will be next. Thank you for watching.